Uh, this morning in the Wall Street Journal, former FDA Commissioner <laughs> Dr. Scott Gottlieb and our next guest have a new warning, saying that features of the coronavirus might be hard to detect. Joining us right now to explain what this means is Dr. Luciana Borio. She is vice president of NQTEL. She previously served as director of medical and biodefense preparedness policy for the White House. And Dr. Borio, thank you very much for being here today. Good morning. It's great to be here with you today. Let's talk first about what Joe was just bringing up, this idea that there was a plane that arrived in Anchorage, Alaska from Wuhan carrying over 200 Americans who had been coming from there. The reports are that they are being screened and being screened frequently. They were screened before they took off. They're being screened in Anchorage. But I believe the next stop for that plane is in Los Angeles. Is there any way to know for sure if those people on board have not been infected? Sure. So there's no way to know for sure, but the CDC officials who are working with these, these uh, the, the, the passengers in a plane are going to be monitoring very, very closely. So these are people that are going to, be, going to be looking for whether they have any symptoms of the coronavirus, whether they have any risk factors, any contact with sick people when they were in China. And they're going to be tested to see if they might be harboring the virus. So this is a highly controlled situation where they're going to be, you know, they're Contact with other people going to be restricted until we know for sure whether they may have been exposed. What, so they will test them. You said that there's only one way to have this test done. The CDC can do it, but it does take several days, and, and the results have to be sent to the CDC to be performed? That's right. So today the situation is that anybody that needs to be tested uh, gets their sample sent over to the state health lab, and then from the state health lab to the CDC, they run the test, and then the results come back. And this takes at least a couple of days. So it works fine in this highly contained environment, but as the number of cases expand, it becomes very difficult to maintain uh, testing in such a centralized manner. It, and it's really critical to get, you know, tests at the point of care. Right. If this is a, a six-month event at least or whatever, doctor, wouldn't it be easier to do a diagnostic um, test with something like antigens or something that you could do? Uh, right while you're there? Uh, it, doesn't technology allow for that? And could that be developed in, in a matter of, of weeks uh, well, we, to, to do instantaneous testing? Yeah. So the technology, the technology exists. It always has to be refined uh, when we are dealing with a new virus. Uh, but it is the most critical aspect of, a, a, of epidemic control is to identify any person that may be harboring the virus right. and isolate them to prevent further spread. That's the most critical step. So our efforts right now, you know, this is going to be, we're going to have a very dicey uh, next few weeks with this rapidly expanding epidemic uh, in China, population restriction of movement, more countries reporting cases. So this is going to be a rocky road ahead of us. And I think all, most all of our efforts right now have to be towards rapidly developing and deploying this test. Yeah, I was the, very happy yeah. to see the FDA do a call to action to private sector for them to submit applications uh, to the FDA for a rapid review. So we have some hope that these tests can be fielded quickly. So is the, is the feeling now that human to human transmission, it, that's pretty facile, it's easy, it happens a lot. It's, it's a, is it a very contagious virus? Do we know at yeah. this point? What's the feeling there? So there's a lot we don't know right now, but it's pretty well established that there's person-to-person -person transmission. Um, and well, cases in other the, countries from where people they who have not been visited. But China. I just wonder how. That's uh, right. So there's person-to-person -person transmission. And, you know, we don't know exactly how much, how much, um, how easy it is to transmit. But right. my biggest worry is that people that may feel just a little bit sick, that are not sick enough to kind of stay home, to d discount the possibility that they might be sick and, um, you know, go about their their daily business, and in that way, they're going to be infecting more people. So there must be a sensitization that people that have the symptoms and risk factors for it right now, you know, need to be kind of out of circulation. One of the questions is the mortality rate, and I realize it's early and it's hard to try and get your, our arms around this at this point, uh, but we have been reporting that the mortality rate looks like it's much lower than it was with SARS, maybe something like 3 percent versus 10 percent with SARS. But then you hear these new numbers overnight where there's 132 dead and, and 6,000 confirmed cases. My, my guess is we are underestimating it on the number of cases because it's just impossible to know at this point, considering how difficult testing is. What do you think about mortality? How long will it know before we can really establish a mortality rate? That's right, Becky. It's going to be very difficult uh, in the absence of knowing exactly how many people are infected. I do think that uh, we're beginning to see a picture where people that are older, that have other comorbid conditions, other illnesses, 
tend to be the ones that succumb to these new infections, uh, whereas, you know, healthy young tend to do better. But it's still too early to say. Um, finally, just in terms of what hospitals here need to do to prepare, you make the point that there are reports of hospital workers, healthcare workers in China who are wearing masks, who are wearing full gear, and still be have become infected. What, what should we take away from that? That's right. So our CDC is taking abundant precaution and recommending, you know, maximum isolation procedures, which includes, you know, airborne <coughs> precautions and respirators, masks, gowns, uh, gloves, eye protection, which is uh, critical right now to protect our healthcare workers because we don't know exactly how this, how transmissible it is. Uh, but it's going to be very difficult to, to surge, to provide this type of um, containment if the number of cases continues to increase, and uh, which is, again, very critical for us to get in front of the the diagnostic test and deploy the point of care diagnostic test so that we can actually spare the healthcare system from um, being in a position which is going to be very difficult to, to do, which is isolate a greater number of patients that they are ready to do. And, you know, all these, 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 these equipment comes from, from China. Most of the, these PPEs that we're talking about, personal protective equipment, are coming from China. So uh, that's something that really worries me, and we can't afford to waste any time on the diagnostic tests.